but it's yeah. Toby. Yeah. Toby is the specialty player of Lycan, Beastmaster, Venomancer, and if it's get, if it's picked in the draft, it's his. It's the same thing for you know Stormstormer getting his Lena's Invokers begins. or Crystalis yeah. getting his Husker. These heroes aren't flex; they're just really bold statements of hero comforts. I think for me, the most interesting lane in this game is going to probably be this Batrider offlane. Not often do we see Batrider anymore, but also it's a 33 lane. He often will do some either creep wave shenanigans and he'll get level three, then he might try and be quite aggressive on top of the lunar clock. And this is, yeah, this bottom lane, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they play it. Again, just because we haven't really seen the hero in this role for some time. Uh, and you can sort of consider it a matchup where he can be aggressive or the, a, a clock and a lunar deal with uh, a core back quite nicely in the lane. I think Clock, uh, Clock Luna have the makings to start off really well. Um, but if they misplay and get under leveled, then maybe it can be difficult if, like, basically, if, fire, if the Batrider is fire flying on the Luna already if, and Clock's not in position, that's when it's a disaster, right? So it's all about positioning. But it isn't like the, the Bat's going to win every time, right? Like it, it really is actually pretty decent for, for Luna Clock. See how well Kataomi and Toby can pressure Skeeter there in the lane. Looks like he's doing just fine at the moment. I mean, snaking by his side. Flat cannon to clear out anything that's summoned against him. Yeah, this is, I think the, the nice thing here for the Lycan is Ayo Jaru doesn't really start by being super aggressive. Maybe at higher levels it can be, but because Gyrocopters naturally go for flat cannon in this style of play. It's not going to push like him too far out of lane. So this is just going to be most likely a trade of farm and who can be more efficient with the, the early gold that they buy. Dyer's courier has been killed. Oh, we've seen already bottom lane, a lot of uh, movements here. Have the creep wave. You know, yeah, that'll be true. able to tank up the, the battery. Yeah, so it's true. Yeah, Chris <laughs> yeah, it's easy. He doesn't want to fight him here. Radiance bottom tower is under oh, attack. Oh, missing two range creeps. Devastating to the tower. Oh, we actually got one. All right. <laughs> Only missed one range creep. But yeah, again, look, Tatsuka just grabs another wave and off he goes. We are he's actually a pretty good hero to deal with this if you get the battery. So, like, Sasuke did kind of juke a little bit there. He went up and down and whoop, surprised out of it. But you can harass and stop that pull from occurring. See a mid lane. Yeah, Storm Stormer. He's, he's crushing this. Uh, 16 to 7 against the 7 for 2. He's popping off in this matchup. It's just not that good of a matchup for Pango. Like, Lina will dominate. You know, you saw Lina do well against a TA, where TA should be okay. A melee hero who's inside the creep wave, getting hit by LSAs and uh, Dragon Slaves. It's gonna be, it's gonna be rough. So yeah, I, I, I look forward to seeing how Stormstormer takes this lead and puts it in something. He is getting pretty low here though. Yeah, he, in fact, there's a swashbuckle. He might just be dead, Miney. He? He's juke. actually just dead. Uh, good jukes. Huh? Really not. nice jukes there. Fishman comes in and Nine has to back off. Uh, just good little uh, circle around the tree line there. And Nine couldn't quite find that last touch or so. And an ability to commit with the swashbuckle, knowing where it was. We'll see it again here. He had, yeah. he had swash He did there, have it, but I guess didn't want to waste it, right? yeah, he, he didn't want to risk moving it and mm. you know suddenly missing it and then being caught underneath the tower because Stormstormer yeah. did have light strike array coming back up online. So if he ever commits with the swashbuckle, it's him that's suddenly dying under the tower. So he, he plays the safer route and doesn't risk it. Has been killed. The important repercussion of this, though is Fishman TP middle, and now look at Crystalis. He's level three, he's been standing idle in this part of the map because the lane has always been in front of the tower. So because of this TP mid, this aggression of nine, Crystalis has gained nothing in the last minute, minute 20, and 33 has just been free farming. So small little aggressions, forcing out early TPs, is giving Tundra that extra little help to get themselves into the laning phase. Yeah, Satsuka doing a really good job of just, you know, annoying the pool, not making it clean. He still is going to connect on, on part of the pool, but again, be a thorn in their side, allow 33 to freely hit the creeps. And he didn't get his own pull off as well, yeah. Just, yeah, really nice off lane. Uh, I'm a ship happening right now from Tundra. 
Now top lane, both of them getting very low there, Kataomi and, and Toby were and they tried to trade with Skeeter and Snake King. Not, not easy to, to fight into. A lot of damage on that top lane and just not able to slow down Skeeter at all. Complete free farm here on the Gyro. The Lycan Wyvern isn't really the, the lane that I go to. It's like, wow, that's going to that's gonna be a threatening lane. It's more about like the, the idea of what it brings to the overall game. And yeah, they, they'll be happy just getting a Helmet Dominator by, let's say, you know, minute seven, minute eight. And why even having some levels? See in the mid, nine. Pretty much a, a full level behind Storm Stormer. Of how well he's been able to use the Lena in this matchup. And top lane. He, again, it's, it's coming in easily for Skidder to clean up bottom. We're gonna try and move towards Sax, but now with the levels on Sax are in 33, especially over 33 Maybe in the level can. five, he can definitely fight the two of them if they they do try and get aggressive onto Sax. So again, some lanes. Have to be careful. And there we go. 33 is able to get it. The job done. He's in under the tower. It cost him his life, but not before he got the kill as he takes down Crystalis for that first blood. Getting the XP, getting the kill, first blood. So yeah, a big win if, if you're 33. Respawning in seven seconds, we'll just come back to lane and now it's rinse repeat. I think if you're Crystalis, you may be even discussing, I might want to go jungle. Yeah. But he's not really jungle ready, right? Like he doesn't have a morbid mask. He doesn't have any kind of way to initially do that. So he's going to farm up this like double wave coming into his tower. But potentially they could just dive again. I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they're going to go straight for him. In. They're in with the Primal Spring slow. They won't continue the dive quite yet, but we're, yeah, we're absolutely seeing how hungry Tundra are to make a move again onto the Luna. They would have dove if he had Firefly. It was actually on like three second cooldown. Yeah, they're going to bring some more TPs down here because they know 33 is going to make a move. Kataomi's in with the TP. The Cogs are out. The Firefly is burning them as they'll lose Fishman and Crystalis here. Saxa and 33 stay alive. They trapped the two of them in the cogs, but there's just no damage. A Saxon 33 will live, and Kataomi can't offer up anything to, to keep them safe. Top lane, bit of a dive going in here onto Toby. A Snake King's in with the body blocks. Skeeter's able to run him down with the rocket barrages. Creeps are back up to, to tank up some of the damage from this rocket barrage, but it's not going to be enough to save him. As he still goes down, Fishman will TP over, but Snake King and Skeeter look to walk away. Snake King does get caught in the cogs. I uh, see Fishman try and chase, but he can't finish off the kill, and now it's going to be Fishman that has to be careful. Getting too close to Skeeter as he backs off. And we're seeing Tundra getting these early kills now. Four to one, and already a 2k lead. It's starting to open up in their favor. Yeah, really rough chain of events there. It's the dive onto bottom, Chris just returning to the lane, 33 then, and that's good, then being able to get the kill. Storm TP bottom, trying to get a cleanup kill isn't able to connect and of course we see like eventually go down fishman nearly dying as well so right now the the map play of entity they're just getting dragged from left to right they have they have no kind of foundation in which they're able to play around and that is where we're seeing tundra build up this this slow and gradual lead i oh, was seeing it top toby's in trouble level four against the level six of skeeter the cooldowns there snakey does get taken out though she fishman comes in with the save puts the cogs out and he's able to turn it so Toby's going to be able to walk away. And this time around, Entity get the kill, they won't lose anything. The nice thing about Lycan into Jaro, in early on, you can at least you know, tank up the barrage with your wolves, with your Dominator creep. It's a small thing, but yeah. And I know Fog mentioned it on the panel, the idea of Batrider and Wyvern. This is the main reason why Batrider is very strong against Wyvern at all portions of the game. You're able to firefly, you basically cut through the trees and just locate him and kill him off very easily. I'll oh, see you on, I'm on the top lane. Fishman gets in, gets them in the cogs. Never really a safe place to be with these four points in the rocket barrage. He just could take it down over towards the mid. Christmas was trying to find some farm, but they're in on top of them. They'll even relocate Skeeter over as well. As they'll look to run down Luna, but he's back underneath the tower. They won't quite be able to finish off the chase. And now maybe Entity's a chance to turn things a little bit. Stormstorm is stepping up. They are very, very low here. The re-relocate will take the two of them back out towards the top lane. Oh, that was a yeah, plane on the edge there. Crystalis lucky to get out alive, really, with the amount of heroes the Tundra are throwing his way in the mid. Top lane, 
Fish man again him with the cogs to try and trap Skeeter. He breaks himself free, he's fine. So Storm wasn't able to connect on the kill middle because he his skill build. If you were to look at Lena, he's gone for a 4-1-4 build with no ultimate. This is simply because he's just Radiant's maximizing farm, tower. right? Like he doesn't need in his eyes, it's a, like he doesn't want to have to use 140 mana just on this ult when he can just be pushing out the jungle farming. Radiant's he's not looking for the kills. I would maybe argue having the value point helps in case, but he's able to farm so quickly with this build. It is pretty it's pretty cool. Amazing what you found laying around. Crystalis just trying to find some safe spots to be in. Tundra will make the move through the jungle. Crystalis is going to stick Maybe over towards his triangle with the rest of his teammates. An entity actually going to look to get Crystalis involved. They'll smoke up and be ready to make a move up top. They want to look for a fight and try and take this tier one tower down. There's the setup. Fantastic curse here from Kataromi, catches the two of them, they'll be snaking gone. They surround Skeeter, they pop the cooldown, but he'll lose his life. Quick move from Entity that should result in maybe maybe the tower as well here if they want to keep the push going. But 33 has turned up and he looks set to defend this. I think it's difficult for Entity to push this. The wave was at their own tier one when they got the kill. So they have to push out the tower, get to the tier one. 33 is already set up. You know, Pango has TP. This could Dyer's just be you know, devastating attack. for Entity if they commit. Oh, that's I mean, they're right. actually committing. Well, they're going to see 33 to the side. He's already in with the Firefly. He's ready to try and run down Chrysalis. Not back with the Flame Break into Blasto. They'll catch the Luna. Chrysalis goes down. Katomi dies to the flat cannon of Skeeter. Dyer's middle tower as he, uh, it, it, it was exactly as you said, a push Dyer's that was just, it was a risk that they took and it does not pay off. Just didn't quite come together in the fluidity they needed capitalize on those earlier kills and turn it into a tower objective. And then they're instantly back onto mid. It's they're just non-stop just trying to be in the face of an entity. You have to be so careful nowadays of when you choose to, to push a tier one tower. The ability to react is like if you win that reaction and then use that momentum and throw it back into the tower, it can be pretty devastating on how you play the map. And, you know, Tundra, specifically game two and three, when you have an Io, when you have like Pangalea, these are probably two of the best heroes to defend these early objectives. You just offer up one hero to soak up the initiation, and then you relocate in one other, and then you kind of just roll up and run down the backline. So Tundra's lineup is built to defend all of these early towers. So Entity, a lineup that wants to group up early, that wants to utilize fighting, Luna fighting, hitting fighting, a tower, fighting, fighting, like fighting. him with the ultimate, they have to be so careful with how they approach that one objective, because this lineup, if you fail on that first objective, it's so hard to get the momentum again to go for it a second or a third time. Like, as you see here, Entity are probably not going to even hit a tier one tower now for probably like 10 minutes of the game. They're just going to hit whatever they can, hope to get a BKB on Lina, uh, Luna, sorry. And that's just because of like that one engagement top, that the issue of laning phase. That top lane, Fishman tried to get the catch there on nine, but a well-timed shield crash gets him out the line of the hookshot. Mid lane, Stormstorm is going to attempt to push, but here's the TPs, and he'll back away completely. He has to keep, yeah, skip himself right back. Saxa was ready to jump from the trees if he hung around near the tier one. Thirty-three's already got the bots. He's 1,400 gold towards the, the Blink Dagger. Just to see, he's been shifting between BKB and Blink Dagger in his quick buy. I think I prefer to Radiant's see the Blink right now, just because they don't really need someone to tank up. You have the IO to help that early on. You just need to have that extra form of initiation to set up the relocate to ensure Pangalea gets that clean rolling thunder. And ideally, you want to jump Wyvern every fight. If you're, if you're a Tundra right now, you're probably taking 33. You please jump Radiant's Wyvern, Pangalea will then deal with, let's say, the Luna, and just collapse as a team. So. I like the adjustment from the BKB quick buy into the Blink Dagger. It will give themselves a really dominant, you know, probably 16, 17 minute timing that they can just run over their Death, opponent. Death. Ooh, this little Diffusal Blade pick up on Pangler as well. Pretty interesting. Dyer's top, top, top line. Has now, but I finish it this time with a bigger push. Mid lane, Tundra, eyeing up the tier one there. Well, that TP's coming in from Entity. Kentaomi will start to clear out the wave. Maybe a hard one to defend for Entity. Radiance middle tower is under attack. 
Oh, they get the hook shot. Mishmash going to try and make the move. He's actually able to split them here with the Colts pushback, but already in on top of the the 30 trees there with the lasso. The curse will get laid down, holding back the two of them. Gives the space for Stormstormer to get out to safety. Nine reaches in, though, catches him with the splash buckle. Shield crash over to two. Slows down Fishman with a diffuser blade. They're trying to run down Nine. Snaking is healing him up. 33 will knock back the chase of Entity with the flame break. They'll turn their attention over towards the bat instead, see if they can find 33s into the trees, looking for the TP out, they've got nothing to stop it, he makes it away. A nice little defense from Entity, they're kind of showing how they are able to disrupt the, the Ijar. Grr. Grr. Mm. So I think Entity are probably struggling a little bit in regards to getting the lightning into the game. A couple of his ultimates have basically been running around watching his team die as he kind of just examines the fight. And the fish map, very, very dead there. Seeing how the cold embrace won't really save you much. Just when you're underneath the, the firepower of Skeeter's gyrocopter. Radiance top tower is under attack. And there's the blink on 33. We've already seen him get some very good lassos. Now oh, he's going to have an even easier time doing that. And the Pan is also going for the second item, Blink Dagger. And he's only like 600 gold away. So you're going to have Blink Pangolin, Blink Bat Rider. You've already got a mech on snaking, pretty cheap item. BKB is 200 gold away. Tundra, uh, like, I just rattled off one big item for every single hero, pretty much. Other than, you know, Monkey King, whatever. He's he's rushing, he's doing a yap, so he's rushing a Skadi. But the fact that Tundra, they can have four of their heroes, all with a big ticket item, entering like the 17, 18 minute mark. It just kind of emphasizes the point that they want to run an entity now. They should be, you know, into the jungle invading, putting on some pressure. See, nine. Well, he's going to go for Storm Stormer. He's in with the Rolling Thunder. They do have the curse that has caught out Snaking, and Snaking will go down. But Storm Stormer's out. And even without their iron, they're happy to fight. 33's in with the jump. Gets him with the lasso, locks that Crystalis. As this will be Tundra cleaning up more. Toby, he's got to run. There's no fight for him to have here against the rest of Tundra. Tundra, the numbers advantage now. And the TP out just in time from Kataromi. He'll get back to safety. But it seems like at the moment, Entity having a tr real struggle to fight into Tundra head on as a 5v5. Yeah, like Entity, if they want to take a fight, they need their supports to step it up a little bit here. They're underneath their own vision, but the way in which Nine is able to be super disruptive, he uses the Diffusal Blade on Storm here, allows him enough time to turn back around because Storm is slowed. And yet, yeah, Fishman, he can't connect on a hookshot to prevent that roll. You know, Kataomi on the other side, we're not seeing the value of that. Of course, he gets the IO kill, but like, it's a curse on an IO, but there's no follow up to then punish the next hero on top of that, right? So, it just, unfortunately for Entity, a little Radiant bit. Are scanning. Not disconnected, but. The draft is just weaker in regards to the bigger team fights right now, right. just because of how strong Pangolier is and how strong heroes like Batrider and Io is at, you know, sustaining, keeping in Dyer's just a nuisance in the fight. Entity have to choose the fight. Like, they've not chosen their own fight now for like Dyer's eight minutes. Like, attack. they need to like smoke up, hook shot initiate, get a kill. Oh, kind of like this. But not like this. Yeah, but he's caught the creep wave. He hasn't caught the hero. Relocate comes in. Fishman and Storm Storm and they both go down here. Double kill for Skeeter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they try and make these moves, but we're seeing as well Snakey's always on, on top of it with the relocates. They're able to bring in the numbers and just outnumber any move that Entity attempt to make. Mm -hmm. It all kind of boils down to that tier one siege bottom, like that one play top where you, you lose top momentum in hitting top. buildings. It, it stops you from wanting to make any of these other Radiant's plays. And now they they do another play at 18 minutes, but it's like Tundra online. Tundra want to take these fights. They want you to try for pickoffs because Radiant's their draft will punish any pickoff attempt with the eye, like you mentioned. The anti they, they've kind of. They've missed the beat on their, their push. They've missed the beat a little bit on their pickoffs. Radiance and if anything, they, they need to farm their attack. BKBs now. Like Tundra has fully itemized for the early game fight. If you can suddenly get like a BKB Lena, a BKB Luna, that initiation, you can turn it around. You can survive the Rolling Thunder. You can brush off the Batrider, and then you can start looking to, to muscle up because why the clockwork? They will be able to do a lot in these fights. BKB piercing stuns. You know, just prevent that gyrocopter pumping I'm out damage. You're going to be doing pretty well. So it's not that bad for Entity right now. They just need to, you know, clean up a little bit of their team fight and get those BKBs online. 
And already a four star for going back rider. Like we literally just saw him buy a blink dagger. He's uh, he's, he's just printing money at this point. Yeah, Axe is nearly done. His farm's going to continue to fly in ahead of anyone else. And maybe sort of some of the, the weaknesses showing that Fox was mentioning in the draft that you have this Luna, but doesn't have any sort of boost to, to help her farm at the pace that Gyro is. Also, like in stealing one of your ancients, you know, every that's couple of minutes. Yeah, that's true. Coming in with the smoke. Ooh, the oh, they look for 33, but the stun's gonna miss. 33's out to the side. They'll still chase him down, though. He should be pretty dead here. They, they will get the kill. 33's gone. Can they get anything more? Over the side, the knight comes in with a fantastic rolling gun. The Primus flies through the three of them. Storm's still gonna be taken down. Katomi will try and hold back Skidder here with the Winter's Curse. The Eclipse comes out, but he just gets shredded by the damage the Tundra have at this stage. Four heroes dead on Entity. Even when they can get in and get that kill, they just cannot get out soon enough, as it cost them so, so much there, just trying to make that attempt on, on 33's back. That's life. That's just like the beautiful demonstration of like, of Dodo, right? It's the fact that 33, he gets caught, doesn't get hit by the stun, but then because of the four stuff, disconnecting a little bit further, it draws everyone in. Like, look at the position of the Wyverns, Katayomi, the Clockwork, everyone. They're in like a conga line of like death, basically. And they all waddle in to kill the bat. And because of that, Sats go behind, cuts them off. Nine gets on in and kills them. And it's all because of a missed LSA into four staff disconnect. Entity are completely out of position. So, yeah, it's one mistake, oof, basically team wipe. It's, yeah, it, it, it's so hard, but Dodo is a punishing game. Oh, still Storm, he tries to go for Saxon, but 33 is ready to help Radiant's out. Middle He's in with the lasso. Storm Stormer is going to get slowly run down. See Snake him come over as well to boost 33 in this chase. The fire flies up. Storm Stormer, is there any way that they can save him? There isn't. He's going to be left for dead underneath his tier two. Storm Stormer's down again. Over in the mid nine, he's playing around with Fishman and Crystalis. He's out with the Rolling Thunder. He'll kill off the clockwork. And back over towards the base, Katsomi's barely surviving up on the high ground. Jump forward for 33, he's gonna look to finish off the kill. The curse is there, but Katsomi still ticks out. And it's three dead on Entity. Toby and Crystalis, the last two left alive. As it really does feel like it's, it's just starting to completely fall apart for them. 33, it's just ran through the tier threes. <laughs> I was like, wait, is Bat Rider on the radio? Oh, no, he's died. Just waddled on in. Yeah, Tundra just showing what they can do with the lead. Entity, they need to, again, it's, they can only fight on initiation. They don't have prolonged fight within their lineup. They don't have skirmishing abilities like Tundra does. And that's where you see Tundra pulling with this, pulling away with this lead, being able to poke and prod non-stop. They're not, you know, they're not victim to, do you have shapeshift up? Do you have curse up? Et cetera, et cetera. Like Tundra, they're just, if, if the heroes have HP, they're going to be, you know, moving towards the, the Radiant Ancient. And 17,000 gold on Gyrocopter. Was that a Daedalus he was about to complete? That's wild. Yeah, he's got Daedalus, DKB, Axe. 23 minutes already in. From, yeah. That's it, yeah, that's it. Pretty good going here by Skeeter. And he's in on top of Toby. And he's going to start come out. Let's try to hold back the Gyro. He commits with the BKB, does die the block. He's going to be back for a second round. See Christmas, BKB's out. He's got to run. The light strike away comes out for Storm Storm over 33. He's in on top of the leader. Storm Storm is out. Christmas as well. Fishman will buy back for Kato. He gets jumped upon by nine. Toby tries to TP out. Will actually be successful with that one. Cogs out to try and protect himself. Fishman, the Tundra, they're just diving in. Happy to fight underneath the tier threes. Ultra kill for nine. <laughs> oh, there's transfer a rampage. Go on, smoke around, get to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, get oh, back man. in, go for the rampage. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's going to get it, unfortunately, for him. No. But uh, I think yeah, he'll, he'll be satisfied with the win here, at least what looks to be it. As game two looks uh, pretty good for Tundra, and game three is just continuing to look like more of the same. The instructions are fortified. Yeah, and this game is also Tundra stepping up their ability to get a lead and then close it out as well. This is them just punishing heroes even further, punishing Entity for the style of draft that they presented in this third game. And they're not you know, waiting to go high ground, they're not waiting, they're just in. 
Oh, I try to go for Skeeter. Not enough, even with the burst of the Laguna. He's going to be more than fine and able to walk it off. Dyer are scanning. How long for Roshan? Four minutes, okay. We're still in the exploration of the first ages, okay. Just trying to think of a timing that Entity might be playing for here. And it's difficult because Storm, he went for this bot Shadow Blade without BKB. Traditionally on Lina's, in the higher games, you just go bot straight BKB. Try and offer yourself up as a another option of tankiness to allow others in. But you went for a little bit more of a, a greedier build. So, yeah. It, again, it's difficult. We're kind of in the same part of the second game where they're so far behind, it's they're waiting Radiant's for Tundra to make that mistake. But I love this smoke. It's a it's a cheeky smoke. You, you, you rack on in, you have the wards. You now own the Radiant base. That's good what they got. They're going to get the stun. They're opening up on the Skeelix. Jenny down to half HP. He'll put the BKB, but he will die. They kill off the Gyro. They're trying to look for more, but nice coming from the side with the Rolling Thunder. Christmas BKB comes to an end, so he's got to back away. Stormstormer dying here underneath the Firefly on 33. 33 jumps back over. Christmas will come out with the Eclipse, but he's been surrounded. Can he get the kill off the Saxon? Saxon's getting one of the GP Mastery heals. Keeping Saxon alive. Saxon will be able to walk away. Big Bat taken out with the Shield Crash of Nine as Tundra just falls back. The Entity once more, Nines in with a swashbuckle, double kill, godlike on him, they'll tap out, GG is called. 26 minutes in, it's another quick win, a quick victory for Tundra. That will give them the series here, 2-1 to one against Entity.